What's up guys, Brian over here, and today we're gonna detail the truck. I just finished up making the cleaning of the truck's frame video, and I wanna show you the process that I do to clean it up. So first thing I do is I start with the wheels. I just rinse them with cool water. And then next, I'm gonna spray some wheel cleaner. My favorite cleaner is Poor Boy's World, which they did not pay me to say that. But this stuff is really good. So what I'll do is I'll spray these wheels. Let it sit for a few minutes and then move on to the next step. After the wheel cleaner has sat for a couple minutes, I'll go ahead and give it a spray. Remember the safety rule when you're using a pressure washer. Aim it for a couple seconds before you use it for the first time to make sure everything is attached tightly. After all four wheels are rinsed, I have a bucket of water and some car wash cleaner with my wheel accessories, and I'm going to activate the soap. With the soap activated, what I'm going to do is take my wheel only mitt that does not touch the paint, and I'm going to give the wheels a little bit of love. Now, I'm wearing safety glasses to protect my eyes from any brake dust that might latch on to this soapy water and fly into my eyes. And I'm working my way in here. I'm not applying a lot of pressure because I don't want to scratch up the paint. Get a little bit more of this. I'm gonna give each wheel some love, and then I'm gonna use a little detail brush that I use for the wheels only to get inside where the lug nuts are. All right, next up I have my little detail brush. With some suds and I gently go inside where the lug nuts are getting a little bit of suds every single time nothing crazy and if you do this stuff regularly you can do it quickly and it won't really need to be done in depth because it's cleaner than it would be if you waited and then I'll take this bent at an angle so I can get inside of the actual rim and behind the spokes. It's important to get inside the rim because there's brake dust in there that you definitely want to break up and get off so it can get rinsed out because that stuff's not good for the wheel. You don't have to do this every wash. I do it probably every other. Some people never do it, but you can see the difference in wheels that have had this done and wheels that have not. So if you think you want to keep the vehicle for a while or you just have respect for the vehicle and the next person to own it, it's these little things that can really make the difference long term. Let's look out for each other guys. Make these still make these Toyotas and whatever car you're driving last as long as possible. Now that that's done, I rinse off the wheels and move on to the frame. In my foam cannon, I have four fifths of water and about a fifth of simple green. And what I'm gonna do is spray the wheel wells and the underbody. I'm gonna take a brush and I get the inside of the wheel wells like this. And I only use this brush for my wheel wells, it doesn't touch anything else. Well, maybe the inside of the mud flaps. I get my wheel wells. I have a tire brush with a curve. I'm gonna go ahead and give the tires a little bit of a scrub. You'd be amazed at how much stuff latches onto the tires. That just does not come off unless you scrub it. Now I'll give the wheel wells a rinse and the underbody.
And for hard to reach areas, I'll use the underbody sprayer. <laughs> Next up, I'll spray the glass with some foaming glass cleaner. Remember to use ammonia free if you have tinted windows. And this is gonna get the bug guts off before the soap even hits. And then with my wet towel, I'll go ahead and give the wipers a wipe. You'd be amazed at how much stuff comes off. Next up, I'll pre-soak the big bug areas like the mirrors, headlights, and part of the bumper to give it a, a pre-soak. This is gonna break down the bug guts. The A pillars get a lot too, so I'll go ahead and give the A pillars a little bit. And by the time I'm ready to pre rinse, those bug guts will come right off. Now that the underbody is clean, I'm gonna put the spare tire right back in its place. And things have had a little bit of time to dry out. Now that the spare tire is back in, I get underneath and I check for fitment just to make sure everything is safe. And I'm also gonna give it a wiggle. It's moving around. I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna tighten it up. So I'll tighten this up a bit and then we're gonna move on to the body. Now I'm gonna get my two buckets fixed up with some soap that I like. I'm gonna activate the soap, get my rinse bucket ready and start the body work. All right, so I'm getting the body nice and wet. That way I have a nice layer of water. And it also is going to, you know, remove some of that dirt that I might not see. I really want a nice cleaning surface. I know that might sound funny to have a nice cleaning surface, but you want to remove as much dirt as you can. So I'm going to go ahead and get this rinsed off, activate the soap, and begin the washing. All right, right, right before the scrub, I have about a cap full of my favorite car soap and some water. And now, let me just turn this dial up here so it gets nice and foamy. We foam it up. All right, now with the truck foamed up, I'm going to work top to bottom. And I'm going to go in straight lines only. And I'm not adding weight. And I'm not really crossing paths with where I've been. And then after that, I'll flip this over and do the other side of the roof. So what I actually do to defeat the purpose of a rinse bucket is, I just use a different uh, scrubby pad or whatever you call this thing wash mitt. I use a different wash mitt for every panel. So I just did the hood And here I go Then I'll flip it I'm going in the direction of the airflow Notice how I'm doing the top half and then I'll do the bottom half Flip it over. I'm not adding a lot of pressure. There it is. Getting the tight spaces that are often missed. And on to the next wash pad. And as I go through, I may have to reactivate the suds with a little bit of high pressure water. But back to the basics. I'll do the first half and then I flip it over. I should probably get a little more suds. And it would help me if I had the bucket next to me, but I guess I was a little focused on doing the video. Grab the suds, 
and do your other part. And if you go quick enough, you don't have to do panel by panel. If you find the soap drying fast, I would suggest that, but now I'm gonna rinse the truck as a whole. Top to bottom, just getting it moist. I'm gonna start with the roof, sides of the doors, and work my way down. I don't like to get super close to things because I don't want to push water further than it needs to go. Okay, so before the water dries and creates water spots, I'm going to take a towel that's designed just for drying. It's a super absorber. And I'm going to start from the cleanest parts of the truck down to the dirtier parts on the bottom. That's the key, dry the water. And the whole idea with the drying is not to add pressure so i'm just going to stand up on these and remember you're not wearing any jewelry that's going to scrape the truck what i'm doing here is i'm not adding any pressure and i'm just going to drag the towel that's it look at that let the towel do the work so let me do the whole truck And you don't gotta be crazy. You know, nothing is perfect. Nothing's ever gonna be perfect, but you just do your best, you know? This isn't an antique Corvette, so I'm not gonna make this a seven hour process, but I just drag the towel and it collects all that water. And generally I wanna pull this towel in the direction that I wash as well, which is the direction of airflow, because there's no avoiding those tiny little scratches that the wash mitts and the drying towel are going to give you. Of course, you don't got to follow that rule in the windows. But if those scratches are all uniform, they're going to be almost non-noticeable, especially if you're not adding a lot of pressure. You know, those little micro scratches that you create, you're not going to be able to see them. And another reality you're going to have to face when it comes to car and truck washing is that the drying towel is not going to last forever you're going to get a few good runs out of it you know if you wash and maintain it properly which i suggest hand washing so that you don't mess up the way the fibers work but you will eventually get little things in the towel that just don't come out even insect remnants in fact that's what this is remains of insects that just don't come out when you wash this a few times after a few washes and you start to notice it looks a little janky, it's time to replace it and spend the 15 or 20 bucks for this huge drying towel. And if you ever drop any of your microfiber towels that touch any surfaces on the vehicle, just chuck them and get a new one. Pro tip, because you will never, ever, ever get that stuff out. We're almost done. During the drying phase is a great time to get to know your truck and do some close inspection and check for imperfections that might need any of your, you know, attention and repair. For instance, I don't know if you can see it, but I have some brush stripes here. Those are light scratches in the clear coat from off-roading. So those are going to have to get attended to. Barely noticeable, but I notice everything on the truck. Look for any rock chips in the front that might need a little bit of touch up. Even if your vehicle is brand new, you can get rock chips. Believe it or not, I've already touched up two spots on the hood that I couldn't even point out if I looked. But it's a great time to get up close and personal and see 
what's going on because these little details that you pay attention to are what make it look great from a distance but finally check out that shine yeah i don't normally dry the bed i usually just let it drain itself but check out the difference between a wet side and a dry side and i just want to show you the power of a drying towel i don't suggest using a regular towel in fact i wouldn't use any beach towel or bath towel on your vehicles they're going to cause scratches yes they'll catch up i know it's just a truck but i like to take care of my stuff watch the absorbency power of a drying towel and mind you this is already damp look at that see this wet area here watch this ready That's why you want to get yourself a drying towel. They're worth every penny. And the only reason I'm drying it this time is my bed mat, which I got, I want it to have a nice dry surface to be on top of because soon is coming the tonneau cover that I purchased. Now that the body's clean, I open things up and I like to get the inside of the door jams. I'm going to use a separate towel for this because if there's any dirt down here that wasn't removed, which is inevitable, I don't want to get that on my drying towel that goes on the outside paint. So just give it a little bit of love. When going fast, you can get this done in just a couple minutes. And then I move on to the door and I like to gently get in between the rubbers here and a little bit of moisture in the towel. Sorry about the leaf blower, guys. The little bit of mo moisture in the towel, it just picks everything up nicely. Here's a good time to check your drain plugs. Well, your drain holes. You can't see with the light, but there's little holes here in the door. There's another one over here. So that's a good time to check and make sure everything is functioning properly. Just another step to prevent rust. Make sure the drains are working. That's all dried up, and I'll get down here. Might as well turn these off so I don't burn them out. As you can see, the inside was already done, which I'll make another video about. But on the inside, I have a little bit of a process. Nothing crazy. I try to vacuum once a week. I like to do a little bit of maintenance often instead of a super deep clean once in a while. Since I went off-roading a couple weeks ago, this was a little bit more of a, a, a deeper clean. But this is typically the process I do for washing the truck. Total time to do this, you know, the outside wash, not the inside, I would say is about an hour and a half to two hours. I can probably get it taken care of in about an hour if I went really quick. But usually I crack a cold one open and I take my time. So let me get these dried up and we'll finish up the video. Also, now's a good time to get under the hood and dry up some of that water and check your drain holes to make sure that they're working properly. Make sure they're not plugged up with debris. This takes five minutes and I have a little towel here just to wipe things up. When you keep the dirt and water out, you prevent the ugly corrosion and rust and stuff that is not really fun for the mechanics to work on or if you do stuff yourself you know it's the little stuff just makes stuff last a long time and while you're down here it's a great time to check out your hoses even if you don't have a lot of miles you know see if you have any dried up coolant if you're getting ready for the winter season you want to make sure your cooling system is working properly you don't want to be on the side of the road when it's seven degrees outside and you can't run the heat because you're going to blow the engine because you're overheating or you don't have any coolant. So give everything a wipe down, check, make sure everything's working good. Typically with hoses, and I'm not a technician, I just like to give little tips. Typically with hoses, if things are leaking, you'll see dried up stuff on the sides. You'll see little pools of things and 
you know, if your battery is plugged in, watch your hands around the fan over here. Don't be sticking your hands in where the fan is. So just a quick little zim zam zoom, get that dried up. Not that the battery needs it, but doesn't it look nice? Just a quick little wipe up, keep that all good. And then everything works, you know, get a little bit more of that water. When you do this once in a while, you'd be amazed at how great things look. You'll get compliments when you bring it in for service and you feel good about it because you take care of it. But it's about washing, not a rant. Also, the rubber plug here that I have for my tow hitch setup. See that? I'm going to leave this open for a day or two so that I don't have water sitting. And look at that nice clean pull so that's going to stay open so it can dry out no rust no dirt well we got a nice picture here i'm not going to do the polish that's going to happen on my next wash i don't have the time tonight i'm supposed to hang out with some friends at a bonfire so that's going to get done uh, next week but the last thing in my process is i really like to get these rubbers shined up and protected so I have an applicator here and I have some tire gel and everybody has a different look that they like. Some people don't care about tire shine. Some people like them really shiny. I used to like them really shiny until they started flicking stuff all over the fender liners here. So I went like half of the amount on my last wash and I really liked that darker look but not glazy. So let me show you what I do to get to that look. All right, so what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of tire shine and I'll put it on there like ketchup and I come down to the tire and I just start doing long rubs like this, not a lot of pressure. And then once I got about half of the tire, I start adding pressure and speed. And that's gonna start forcing the applicator to get into the little crevices and applying the product. And I can always add a little bit more as I go, but the pressure is what really digs it into the writing and stuff like that. And that's the look that I like. You'll see the bottom half is kind of dry looking, the top half is darker looking. So that's what I do. So in about five minutes, I can get all the tires done and I move on to the very last part. See the difference? Now look at one of the ones that's not shined. Looks kind of dull. Now look at this one. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. When I'm done with the tire shine applicator, I like to keep it in a plastic bag because there's no way you can clean that. I also like to keep the actual tire shine in a plastic bag because it gets a little slimy on the outside. And for some reason, I feel like tire shiners and gels, they always leak a little bit. Could just be my luck. But the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the wheels and if you get real close you'll see there's some tire shine on there I'm just gonna clean up the wheels a little bit make them look real nice definitely not needed some people might think I'm crazy but that machine finish on the Toyota stock wheels looks really good when you take care of it and it plays with the light very nicely I'm doing my best not to get the towel onto the actual tire shine on the tire. But let me work through this wheel and I'll show you the difference. All right, so there it is, just about done. Look, no brake dust. It's awesome. The wheel cleaner and the mitt really did their jobs. The way it plays with the light, it sparkles. The machine finish is awesome. And then here's a wheel that hasn't been done yet. Much better. And that is a wrap. Looking clean. 
So, what do you do with your cleaning equipment? What do you do with the wash mitts? I may make a video in the future, but always, always, always clean your cleaning equipment. So what I'll do is I'll actually put on these padded dish gloves that I have over here at home with some soapy hot water and I'll rub these by hand, rinse them out, and they'll dry on a drying rack. I don't do any washer or dryer because they can change the way the fibers work. Yes, that sounds crazy, but it's supposed to be true, and I don't really want to be meshing up the washer and dryer with brake dust and oils and different stuff like that. These will all get washed and rinsed by hand. The sink will get cleaned out really good. These get cleaned out and they dry and get stacked up. These get cleaned out and dried and stacked up. This thing gets run through. There's even a little filter in here that you can take out. The knee pads will get cleaned up. It's a big process. When you go fast and you have a system, it'll work. You know, you just gotta, it takes practice. But that's the way to do it. You know, the automated car washes, they don't really take care of the water the way you think they might. You know, a lot of them are not filtering out for salt. So, you know, you don't know if you want high pressure salts going into places like lights and gaskets and electronics that, you know, salt does not belong and you know, the brushes that they use in a lot of those automated car washes, they're not washed properly. There's grit and rocks and dirt and mud that's just rubbing against the paint and it's gonna mar the clear coat. But when you do it by hand, you know, you get that nice finish. It just depends on how much time you have, how much patience you have, and you know, what you want it to look like and what the overall goal is. But you will have to clean your cleaning equipment when you're done. And that's a process in its own. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about the way I clean my truck. The underbody sprayer is new. I used to do that by hand. But all in all, in and out, in under two hours is the goal. And if I get that every week or so, I'm happy. In the winter time in New York, a lot of times I'll do a touchless wash because it's too cold to do all of this. And then once the springtime comes, I start doing it by hand again. So I hope you guys liked the video. Let me know if there's a certain way that you wash your truck that's a little different than mine. That way we can help each other out. Just wanted to say thanks again for everybody who supports me. I hope you found the video valuable. And if you have a newer vehicle or even an older one that you really weren't sure about how to wash and this video helped you, I'd love to know in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.